high tower, my light in the dark hour. Without him I could not see. He is closer than a brother. Above him there's no other. Without him where would I be? Oh Jesus, what a friend is he. Let me all alone. 
While he's getting that together, um, I was flipping through my book right when we got here, um, and the song just jumped out at me, and I'm thankful. And there's a there's a lot of different ways that you can worship, and there's a and there's also a lot of different churches nowadays that believe really differently and worship really differently. But what it says in our Bible, in that good old King James Version Bible, is that we need to stick with that. We need to stick that's with right. the, the words, stick that's with the old right. stuff, stick with, stick with what we were raised on, what we, right. you know, yeah. we were founded on. Amen. Stick with God. Don't, there, we don't need to make up any other way or do anything different. We just need to stick with Jesus and just worship Him and give Him all the glory. And I just, in this world today, it, I, there's just so many, I don't even know how to describe it, but it just feels like there's so many different you know, people trying to find an excuse for how they feel or for what's going on in their life. Yeah, um, you know, we all have to feel a certain way about everything. You know, but just taking it to Jesus and just trusting Him with it and just, you know, just trusting Him no matter what your day looks like and, you know, just going to Him. I'm thankful that I have a God that I can go to that I don't, you know, have to worry about going through somebody else to be able to get my prayer answered or, you know, for an intercessor. I can go straight to Jesus myself. And I'm just thankful for that. So me. So me. Oh, we got to stay. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. 
the, if, if the foundation of the righteous crumble, what shall we do? I'm glad I'm on a foundation that ain't going to crumble, amen. I'm glad I'm on, I'm on a foundation, amen, that's strong enough and has been all these years, amen, that I've been saved. 38 years that I've been serving the Lord. I'm glad I'm on a solid foundation, amen. And God gave us some stuff, got to work, amen. I don't see the need to change now, do you? Uh, amen. I ain't looking for something new tonight. Amen. God gave us enough. Uh, amen. God gave us exactly what we needed. Uh, amen. If we'll just stick with the old paths, uh, that's the problem. Amen. Jeremiah said, uh, as for the old paths, uh, stand in those ways and you'll find rest. Uh, but the Bible said they wouldn't stand in that. Amen. They wasn't wanting that. They were see, searching and looking for something different or something better or something. They ain't nothing better than what we already Amen. Listen, if it was good enough for them, if it was good enough for our forefathers, if it was good enough for my grandma, amen, it's good enough for me. He got my mama to heaven, and he ain't got my daddy to heaven. I think one day, bless God, it'll get me there.
Give you what God gave me. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the top of the side post the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you aren't you hey listen don't you thank God there's power in the blood tonight amen and they had to take that blood of that lamb amen and do exactly what God told them to do amen with that blood and I'm glad when the hey when the destroyer came when the death angel came that night as long as the blood was applied to that house amen aren't you glad the blood's been applied to your house aren't you glad the blood's been applied to your life aren't you glad the blood's been applied to your heart amen I'm glad tonight bless God I'm covered by the blood that's important tonight Leviticus chapter 14 and the Bible says in verse 14 and the priest shall take some of the blood of the
the trespass offering. And the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed. And upon the thumb of his right hand. And upon the, uh, the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil. And pour it into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand. And shall sprinkle of the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. And the rest of the oil that is in his hand shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed. And upon the thumb of his right hand. And upon the great toe of his right foot. And upon the blood of the trespass offering. And the remnant of the oil that is in the priest's hands shall be poured upon the head of him that is to be cleansed. In other words, not just only on his thumb. Amen. Not just only. Amen. The Bible said to put it on his right a thumb on his right hand. Not only on his thumb. Not only on his toe. Amen. But aren't you glad you can be covered by the blood? He took the rest of that blood, the Bible says, and he poured it upon the head of him that is to be cleaned. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord. Father God, we want to thank you once again for the privilege that we had to call on your name tonight. God, we want to thank you tonight, Lord. God, for your presence in this place. Lord, I pray tonight, God, that you would move just for the next few moments tonight, God. Lord, we ask you to speak to our hearts tonight, God. Lord, I pray you would challenge your people here tonight, God. Lord, would you help us? God, Lord, I pray that we would go out of this building in a different way than what we came in. Lord, I pray for that unction, that, that anointing from God tonight, Lord. Lord, that you would use this vessel tonight that you might be glorified. God, we ask you now, God, to move. Help us all. Help those that are listening from home tonight, God. Lord, we pray for our nation tonight, God. Lord, we know that in just a couple of days, God, the course of this nation is going to change. Lord, for the good or the bad, Lord, which way, however it goes, we're just trusting you anyhow. God, we've got all our confidence. We've got all our trust in you. And we ask you tonight, God, Lord, to help us, Lord, I pray, to stay under the blood. God, I thank you for the blood. And thank God there's power in the blood. And God, we pray for those, Lord, tonight that have never been saved. Those tonight, God, are not covered by the blood. God, would you move? God, tonight, would you speak to that, that heart tonight, God? Lord, we pray tonight, God, that sinner, God, will realize if they ever going to get to heaven, God, they'll have to be saved. They're going to have to accept the atonement that was made at Calvary. Thank God for the blood of the Lamb of God tonight that cleanses us from all our sins. God, we pray tonight you'll speak all over this nation tonight. God, may men, women, boys, and girls come to a saving knowledge of Jesus tonight and realize tonight, God, we need to be covered by the blood. And Father, we'll praise you. God, we'll thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated, amen. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I, I, I thought about this, amen. Uh, I do believe that we're living in a time, uh, I believe, where God's people need to get back under the blood of God tonight, under the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, not just not just in our thinking, amen. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, but also in the way that we live tonight, amen. I don't know about you, uh, but I still need the blood of Jesus Christ applied uh, to my life. Amen. I thank God 38 years ago, amen, when that blood was applied to my life that night in an old-fashioned altar, and God cleansed me from all my sins. Amen. I've got this power in the blood, but we still need that blood tonight. Amen. Over this nation tonight, I know we got people all around us, and they call our Christianity they call, amen, what we believe in a slaughterhouse religion. I've got news for them. My Bible tells me in Hebrews that if there hadn't been any shedding of the blood, there'd be no remission of sin. We'd have no forgiveness 
forgiveness of sin. Amen. The blood's important tonight for you and I. Amen. It's important tonight for those that are lost. We still need that blood. It was over in Joshua chapter 2. Amen. You remember the story about those spies as they went in to spy out the land. And there was a young lady. By the way, she was wicked as sin. She was wicked as the devil. She was a prostitute named Rahab headed to hell. But the Bible says in verse 18 that Rahab, amen, the harlot, saved herself. And watch this, and her entire family. Preacher, how did she do that? She saved herself from destruction when she hung that scarlet thread. Amen, out that window. I'm glad there's a scarlet thread that runs through the Bible. Amen. It's all about the blood. It was from the beginning all the way to the end tonight. Amen. Now listen, and if it saved Rahab and her family, I believe it can save me and my family. Amen. Thank God for the blood. I read to you tonight in Exodus. Amen. About the blood, the children of Israel saved their household. Amen. From the death angel that night when they applied that blood. Amen. To the lintel and to the side post of their homes. Had that blood not been applied, that death angel would not have passed by that house. It didn't matter. Hey, it was the Egyptians and the Israelites. Amen. And if the Israelites, even though they were God's people, if they didn't apply the blood, they would not have been spared that night. The blood makes a difference tonight. Amen. There's people sitting on our church pews. Amen. They know all about the Bible. They know all about Jesus. They know all the songs that we sing. They need to stand up and pray when we pray. But they've never been saved. They've never been covered by the blood. And if you ain't covered by the blood, amen, when that death angel comes, amen, listen, it'll drag you to hell tonight, amen. The destroyer will get you if it doesn't see the blood tonight. So I want to preach on this thought, amen, my house under the blood. Amen, I'm glad my house under the blood tonight. Amen. God help us here in our text. What I read in Leviticus chapter 14 of the Bible says amen that God is dealing with the cleansing of these lepers. Amen. You know what leopard represents? It's a type of a sin. It's a typology of sin. Leprosy in the Bible. Amen. It's a typology of sin. Amen. But thank God there's a treatment. Hey, there's a treatment for sin. There's a remedy for sin. Amen. The doctor can't give it to you. Amen. You ain't going to find it on a shelf in the grocery store. Amen. You can't go to the doctor. He don't come in a pill. You can't buy it in a bottle. But I'm glad the remedy. Amen. For my sins and your sins. For my household and your household. Found in a place called Calvary where Jesus shed his blood. Amen. Jesus didn't spill his blood because anything that's spilled is wasted. But I'm glad he shed his blood. And just one drop. Amen. There's power in the blood. And just one drop of that blood. Amen. Will cleanse you. Amen. What this text shows us is that this leper, amen, was not considered to be clean until that blood was the Applied, amen to him. Hey, thank God tonight that we can still have the blood applied. Aren't you glad, Jesus? Amen. When he got up out of the tomb, amen. The Bible says, hey, Mary couldn't touch him because he had not yet ascended to his father. But when he went back, amen, and he placed that blood on the mercy seat, hey, we're in there in the throne room of God. Amen. It made a way for you and I to be cleansed, amen. From all our sins, uh, from all uh, our unrighteousness, uh, uh, from all of our filthy rags. Uh, amen. I'm glad when God uh, looks at me uh, and when God looks at you, uh, God doesn't see me. Uh, and God, uh, hey, God doesn't see color. The only color God sees is red, uh, uh, cleansing red, uh, the blood of His Son tonight. Uh, I'm glad tonight, uh, amen, the priest uh, would apply that oil. Uh, amen. Uh, the Bible says, uh, uh, Listen, uh, uh, that oil would have to be applied to the right thumb. It would have to be applied to 
the right too. He would take it out of his right hand and dip it out of his left hand. But, uh, but after that, he would take the rest of it and just pour it all over him. Hey man, I'm glad I've been covered by the blood. Hey man, I said, I mean, aren't you glad there was a day you were co- you were considered unclean? You were you were just like these leopards outcasts from society. You could, hey man, that's what they considered us to be. That's what they called me, just an old outcast. Hick a bob is what they called me. Hey man, when I was growing up, if you ever read your Bible, then you know what the name means. A man without God. And that's what I was. I didn't know that's just what the name somebody gave me when I was young. I didn't know what it meant until I got saved. And it was true. I was a man without God. But I'm glad God came and found me one day. Amen. God. Amen. Applied that blood. Aren't you glad there was a day in your life? Amen. That the blood was applied and you were cleansed from all your sins. Thank God tonight. Listen, there's the importance of that blood. It's important that you have that blood tonight. It's important that, amen, that we're covered by the blood. Preacher, why is it important? The Holy Spirit answers to the blood. Amen. He would take that oil and he couldn't put it on that leopard. He couldn't put it on that sinful man until first the blood was applied. Aren't you glad when the blood was applied? Then the Holy Ghost of God came. Amen. I'm glad. Amen. The Holy Ghost of God says, Amen. He answers to the blood. He can't come if there ain't no blood. But if you're covered by the blood, thank God that the Holy Spirit of God come right with it. Amen. It's right there with it. Amen. I don't have to wait two or three days, two or three weeks. Amen. Bless God. We get it all. Amen. The moment you're saved, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I go to school with my children the other morning, and we were got into that discussion about Simon said, that all is Jesus God? He said, if Jesus God, then they is he the father? We got into this big discussion. I said, son, let me explain it to you like this. Sophia's sitting in the front seat, Silas in the back. I said, you listen. God the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit's like this. I said, Joe, you know what water? You got water. I said, but if you boil it, you got hot water. And if you freeze it, you got cold water. But it's all still water. I said, that's the way it is. You got God the Father, you got God the Son, and you got God the Holy, but it's still God. Amen. You can't separate it. And I'm glad that now. Amen. When God saved me, covered me by the blood, I got the power. I said, I got the power. I can't say no to sin without Him. Amen. Why? Because sin is enticing. Sin, it'll control you. But aren't you glad tonight? Amen. That I'm not under that bondage anymore. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Listen, the Bible tells us, amen, that we don't have to let sin reign in this mortal body anymore. Why? Because we got power through the Holy Ghost of God to say no to the devil, say no to sin. We can live holy. Amen. I said we can. Amen. We can. By the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And you got that when you got covered by the blood. Amen. The importance of the blood tonight. Uh, amen. The Holy Spirit answers to the blood. Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, what's this? Witnesses of the blood. Amen. He don't talk about himself. He talks about the Son. It ain't never about him. It's always about him. Amen. Uh, God, thank God, there's power in the blood. The Holy Spirit honors the blood. The Holy Spirit testifies of the blood. Watch this. The Holy Spirit had to wait for the blood. Amen. Aren't you glad tonight that you've been covered by the blood and now, and now, in your home, in your heart, in your life, you got power that you never had before. Amen. Listen, the Holy Spirit only comes, it only comes where the blood has been applied. And what's wrong right now in our nation? What's going on in our in our churches is we've got people, amen, trying to do it without the blood. You can't do this without the blood. Amen. We, we can't make it without the blood. 
Amen. That's why God told them back there in Egypt. Amen. Make sure your household is covered by the blood. Amen. He told us about these lepers. Amen. These filthy men. These filthy people. Transgressors to the law. Amen. Had to be covered by the blood. Amen. Listen, the Holy Spirit comes when the blood's been, been applied. Listen, the blood. Amen. We got the blood. Then there's that old. Amen. Can I say this? Without the blood, there is no justification. Amen. Without the blood, you're not justified before God tonight. You can sing all the right songs. You can sing all the right prayers. You can dress the right way. You can even put a King James Bible in your hand. But if you ain't ever been saved and you ain't ever been covered by the blood, then you are not justified in the eyes of God. But if that blood has been applied, amen, if you've accepted what Jesus did at Calvary and you accept in the atonement. You accepted the sacrifice. You accepted the blood. Amen. Thank God tonight I'm justified. You know what that means? Justified. Have never sinned. Amen. I'm glad tonight. Hey, listen. I'm the eyes of God. God sees the blood. And listen. Without that, there is no justification. Without the blood, there is no deliverance. Without the blood, hey, there is no sanctification. Amen. You can't be set apart and used to God. Amen. There's people right now. You know the difference. Amen. Somebody gets up to sing. Amen. Or somebody gets up to do anything for the Lord. And they ain't saved and the blood ain't there. They ain't nothing in it, y'all. It's dead. Amen. It ain't nothing but entertainment. Amen. Oh, but you can tell the difference. They don't have to be some big name group. Amen. You just take somebody saved, filled with the Holy Ghost and God, want to do something for God, and they get up. Amen. I'm telling you, there's a difference in it. You can feel the difference. You can see the difference. Why? Because with the blood, amen, we've been set aside. We've been sanctified, set apart from this world. And you can't be like that until the blood has been applied. Amen. Without that blood, there's no anointing. There's no power. There's no peace. Amen. Without the blood of Jesus Christ. Hey, without that blood applied. Amen. The joy. The joy of the Lord. There is no joy of the Lord without it. I know these people got joy. Amen. But it's just temporary joy. Hey, you can get that. The Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season. Amen. You can enjoy sin for a little while. But it ain't like that. knowing the Lord. Amen. It ain't that same kind of joy that you get when you go to bed. And you got that. Brother Danny, you got peace in your heart. Amen. That you can go to bed. Bless God, I can close my eyes and go to sleep. And if I don't wake up here, I'm going to wake up there. And if I wake up there, it's a lot better than waking up here. Amen. But that's the peace that only God gives you. And that only comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You ain't going to get it nowhere else. Hey, amen. By the way, there's no protection without the blood. But we that are saved, amen. I'm glad, amen, I'm glad there's protection, amen, that only comes from God to those that are saved tonight. I, my little grandson, we'll get to that red light. I told you this the other night. We get down here on, on, on Thursdays and Fridays every week, and we'll get right down here at the red light on Linwood Road. I say, Silas, pray. And Silas begins to pray. He said, Lord, keep us safe. He said, don't let nobody get corona. Keep my teacher say, hey, here's what they'll say, Lord put a hedge about us. Amen. Our kids know, amen, that when you're covered by the blood, there's a hedge of protection, amen, that only comes from God. He, he ain't praying to the cops. He ain't praying to the police. He ain't praying to the principal. He ain't praying to the teachers, amen. He's praying to God that God put a hedge about them and protect. Aren't you glad tonight? Hey, when the blood's applied to your home and the blood's applied to your heart, there's protection that you can't get in this world. Amen. Only, only, only through the blood tonight, amen. No wonder the Holy Spirit's trying, amen, to bring our churches back under the blood. And I believe that tonight. I believe God is moving through this land right now. 
And he wants his churches back under the blood. Amen. We can't do it without it, y'all. We, we, we can't. We, we can't. Amen. If we do, it won't accomplish anything. But if we'll get God, amen, back in our churches and we get back under the blood, get back under the spout where the glory runs out, amen, and know that we need that blood. That blood's important, amen. It's not my blood. Listen, I could cut myself and throw blood all over you and it wouldn't do nothing but make you throw up. Amen. It'd make me pass out if I saw your blood. I'm weak about it, amen. Oh, but listen, if you get his blood, amen, over you, over your children, over your home, it'll make a difference, amen. And that's why we need to plead, amen. We need to plead the power of the blood over this nation right now. This nation's in trouble like we've never seen before. Spiritually, America, amen, is in trouble. And what we need to be praying is God help us, amen, to get our people back under the blood. Amen. We've got to get back to that place. Amen. We know the importance of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you know tonight that they don't consider it to be important anymore? Amen. They consider it now as something in the past. It's a fad. Amen. It came and it went. Oh, no, it didn't. Amen. We better hope it comes and stays. Amen. We need the power of Jesus Christ and the blood of the atonement of God. Amen. Over our homes. Over us tonight. Amen. God, I'm not Peter. Amen. There at the supper that night. And when the Lord got up and guarded himself, going to wash their feet. And Peter said, Lord, you ain't going to wash my feet. He said, you, you can't. He said, Peter, if I know. He said, then you have no part of me. What did Peter say? The Lord, don't not just my feet, but wash all of it. Hey, listen, I don't need just my right hand. I don't need my right thumb covered by the Not just my right toe. Bless God, we need to be covered from head to toe. Hey, Amen. We need it all. We need it all tonight. Why? Because the, the importance of the blood tonight. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 9.22 I already told you without the shedding of the blood there is no forgiveness. Amen. And there's a song we sing. When I see the blood I can't say no. Y'all know that. But it does say this. I will pass over you. He said, I will pass over you. He didn't say when I, hey man, see the preacher in the house. He didn't say, if I see a Bible in your house, hey amen, that ain't what he said. He said, when I see the blood, hey amen, I will pass over you. I'm glad tonight, hey amen, when God comes to 109 Pilots Ridge, I thank God there's blood in the house, hey amen. I thank God tonight, there's blood been applied, hey amen, when he sees the blood, he said, I will pass over you. If those Israelites had not passed applied that blood, that night, that death angel would have come to them. They would have been crying in Israel just like they were crying in, in, in Egypt. Amen. Uh, uh, did you know tonight when everybody dies now, they want everybody to go to heaven? Can I tell you, I don't want to bust your bubble. Hey, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Everybody that dies don't go to heaven. Amen. 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 The Lord, it amazes me. They live like hell, live like the devil, live in sin. And the moment they die, preacher, they were so good. Preacher, they, 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 they did so much. And they want you to preach them right into heaven. Amen. You know what? I believe we would do a lot less funerals if we just got up there and told the truth. They wouldn't be calling us to do many of them, would they? Amen. If we just got up there, amen, and say, you know what? He was good. His family said he was. His wife said he was. His children said he was. But he didn't have the blood applied. And if he didn't have the blood applied, amen, then he didn't go to heaven. According to the, we just need to tell the truth, amen. Everybody that dies don't go to heaven. But we're living in a society, amen, where everybody goes to heaven. God help us tonight. Amen. To realize we need to get back under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you want to walk in the power with the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, then the blood has to be applied to your life. Amen. I'm talking about the blood. Amen. That was shed on Calvary's tree. Amen. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And listen, it didn't start at Calvary up. It started in the garden. Amen. When he went out there praying, 
and he looked into that cup, and in that cup he saw you. He saw how wicked you were. He said, he saw how evil you were. He saw all your sins and all your ungodliness. Amen. And he began to pray. Amen. As he said, he saw into that cup. Amen. That night, and he said, but here's what he said. Nevertheless, nevertheless, Father, let not my will be done, but let Thy will. And the Bible said, while he looked into that cup, and he was out there praying in agony like that, that his sweat became as great drops of blood. Did you know that you and I couldn't suffer like that? I read about that one time. It said before a human being could ever suffer to the point that their blood would become great drops of blood, their sweat would become, they, their heart would literally burst. You couldn't take it. But he did. And it started in the garden. Hey, uh, listen, down there at the pavement, uh, hey man, they took him uh, down there when they came and got him uh, and arrested him, uh, and they took him down on the pilot's hall, and they took him to that place called the pavement, uh, down there at the rock, uh, and they would take that man and strip him of his clothes and, and bound him to that rock, uh, and that Roman soldier would take that whip, and he would beat him, uh, and beat him, uh, and beat him. Do you know how much blood came out of his back long before he ever went to the cross, uh, and that blood? It was for you and I. That's why the Bible says by His stripes when we are healed. I told you, hey man, that's why we need the blood. The blood's important tonight, hey man. We need that blood applied to our lives. Thank God there's power in that blood. Healing power, saving power tonight from the blood of Jesus Christ, hey amen. A bloody mess. A mangled mess. It was so bad. I'm afraid we have gotten over this. It was so bad that when his mother saw him, have you ever seen somebody beaten that you couldn't recognize them? I have. Have you ever seen somebody so mingled that you couldn't recognize them? We had a young man that lived next door to our church. His name was Robbie Knight. And little Robbie Knight, he used to race cars when he was like 15 years old. Then I were Duval and all them race car drivers. When he was 16 years old, he was racing cars. I mean, they said he's going to be one of the next greatest race car drivers that could be because this little boy just, he, he could race cars. His daddy got him. We'd be in here on Sunday night trying to praise God. And they had a, after where that, that, that concrete slab was a building. That's when they had that race car. They worked on it never sat Sunday evening. Ned Brown back over. Wow! Wow! That little boy getting I said, why don't you quit that while we have church? He'd get in that thing. They'd go out there every Sunday. Every Sunday. Right in the middle of church. And they'd grab that old motor up in that car that he raced. And, and one Wednesday evening, little Robbie came up to the porch of the church. He said, Preacher, he used to come with his mom. Y'all know Louise Knight. He used to come with him here. He said, Preacher, I'm going to get back in church, son. I was standing right there where I always stand. He come up on the porch. He came to me. He said, Preacher. He said, I want you to know. He said, I'm going to get back in church Sunday. I'm going to start coming. I said, Little Robbie, I hope you do. I said, As a matter of fact, I'm going to be praying for you, son. We had a wedding going on here that Saturday. And Saturday, you know how to wait to go here, be in the room, and the best man stand outside that door. We wait for everybody to come down. And they, I know when a certain person goes to the big city, we're supposed to come in. Amen. And, and I'm sitting up there, and, and it's 2 o'clock. We're fixing to come in when a highway state patrol will come flying in this place. Said, I need to see the pastor of this church. They come and got me. I went and met him, and he said, I said, yes. He said, the people next door, they go to this church. I said, the mom does. He said, can you come with me? We went next door. Louise come to the door because Robert, his dad, wasn't home. He said, this night, do you have a son named Rob? She said, yes. He said, I hate to inform you that your son was killed around 11 o'clock this morning in an automobile accident. And I said, Louise, <laughs> And he come up here and get some of my ladies to go down there and sit with him. And I'm telling you, I have to tell you this. Later on that day, I had to come back here. You talk about some heart. 
then my heart's breaking because I got a church member that came from the Holy Sunday. And then you have to come back up here and put a smile on your face. See, they don't know, preacher, what we really go through. And you got to come over here and put a smile on your face because you got a young man that's wanting to marry his bride. Amen. They don't need a preacher crying in the bed. We got through all of that. And I'll be honest with you, my mind's still down there. I watched her fall out on the floor. Her husband and he got home then. And I don't know how he's going to act because that was his pride and joy. That state patrolman stayed around long enough to Robbie got home and we got through and we went back down there. He said, somebody's got to go to the hospital to identify his body. Listen to me. Louise said she couldn't do it. I said, preach, I don't want to see this time like that. I said, I'll do it. I can tell if it's him or not. But we went to the hospital and we went down to the back of the hospital to the morgue with that police officer. And he took me back there with that. And I just forgot my job. <laughs> it literally threw him out of the car when it flipped. It threw him out into a tree. It threw him out of his body. And then he looked. He was walking up there. The road of Bela Della Rosa and his mama's on the side. <laughs> He's a mangled mess. They were him, dripping off his back. They had beat him so bad. They smoked him with their fists. They spit on him coming up the road. And the Bible says she didn't even know. Jesus went through for you and I to have our sins come. We have our sins in us. So that we can have the power of the Holy Spirit abiding on our lives. Amen. And that we can overcome sin and overcome Satan and overcome self. Amen. That we can be fit to even go to heaven. Amen. It's not because of what we've done. It's because of what He did. Amen. It's not because of who we are. It's because of who He was. That we could even be fit to go to heaven tonight, amen. It's because of the power of the blood of the Lamb of God. Aren't you glad tonight there was a day in your life that God came to you and saved you and you're covered by the blood, amen. Then why? Why does it seem like we've gotten over it tonight? Why does it seem like, amen, God's people have gotten over what Jesus did at Calvary? I believe we need to get back to that place where we're under the blood tonight. Amen. We need to get back. I, my house needs to be under the blood. Your house needs to be under the blood. Amen. Listen, this church house needs to be under the blood. Amen. By the way, they're trying to, that's why they come out with these Bibles. Amen. So-called Bibles. Uh, uh, you know why they want us to get another song book? Uh, and they don't want that red uh, letters. Uh, they don't want that red black edition in our churches anymore. I'm going to tell you why. It's about the songs that we sing in this book. They power in the blood. They power in the blood. Uh, and those other Bibles, amen, uh, uh, that they want to call a Bible, it takes out uh, uh, the deity of Christ, uh, the sonship of Christ, and the blood of Christ. Uh, that ain't a Bible. That's just a book, amen. And I still like this power in the blood, don't you? There's still does something to me. It does something for me. Thank God I know there's power in the blood of Jesus, amen. We need to get back. I'm closing tonight. Amen. This gospel. Yes, a bloody gospel, amen. Calvary was bloody. The cross was bloody. Jesus' blood poured out of His power. You know why? You're the reason. He took that blood into the holy place. Offered upon the mercy seat in heaven. And when God the Father accepted the blood of his only begotten Son for the sin of all. And he 
and I have hope tonight. And it's by the blood. Amen. It's by that blood. It's by His blood. Because of that blood, we're saved tonight. Amen. Because of that blood. Listen, we're washed by that blood. We're sanctified by that blood. We're protected by that blood. We're healed by that blood. No wonder the songwriter was moved when he penned these words. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Thank God tonight every sinner just plunged beneath that flood loses all his guilty stains. Amen. I'm glad I've been covered by the blood. I'm glad, amen, God. That, amen. Listen, they still, they still a few that believe in the power of the blood. And we need to get back under that blood. There's another song. Have you ever been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed? Are you are you daily trusting in this grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood? Lay aside those garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood. Now you know why I'm about to come unglued, amen. When she started singing that, I said, thank God. Amen. God knows what we need. God knows exactly. We need to get back, amen, to Calvary. We need to get back to that place where the blood was shed, where we're missing of our sins, and trust God again. Folks, we, we must. It is a necessity for us to be under that blood. We've got a nation going the other way right now. You hear me? You hear me good? We're going to lose what we got. If we don't get back to that place, if we don't get back to that place, but we trust God and believe God that, amen, and know that it was by that blood that I'm even here tonight, Reason many, many live a defeated life. The reason many don't have the power of God. The many, amen, listen, they, they don't have the power in their preaching, they don't have the power in their teaching, they don't, they don't have the power in their singing. You see? The blood. If there's no blood, there's no power. Amen. Revelations 12, 11 says they overcome the devil by what? The word of their testimony? By the it's important that we get back to it. It's important that we claim this blood. Amen. We must. I believe we need to preach. As much as we need to be preaching about hell, we need to be preaching about the blood of Jesus. There's two things you don't hear preached anymore. Hell and the blood. Amen. We, we need to preach about the blood. We need to sing about the blood. We need to testify about the blood. Can I ask you in closing tonight? Where is this blood in relation to you and the Lord? Have you been washed in the blood? Are you covered? That old leopard. It is not the sin. Can go home. He's an outcast of the sin. I, I told y'all in there. That message was in your life. My family disowned me. We lived in our house for like 25 years. My daddy's been there 16 years. The first nine years. Those other nine years. He's never come to our house. Not one time. You don't mind because I told him he couldn't bring his beer into my house. I said, You're welcome if you want to bring it a sip into my house. church pews the last few months of this month. 
that's right. Hold that one. an old sinner who was saved by the grace of God. And they didn't want to hear it. But no, listen, we can't stop. We can't quit. This world needs to know what happened on that cross. They need to know this power and that blood. Our children need to know, you know why it's important that we do this now? Because if this election goes the other way, they don't take the money. What's our kids going to have when we go and go? If we don't start telling them that, we can't even get them back to Sunday school. So half of them ain't going to come back. That you get your house. Get the mud black. But you don't put it in the middle. Get your cross. Hold this to that place. Hold a cup. Hold a cup. That's going to come. You hear me? That's coming. And if death don't come, the Lord's coming. And I believe that. Do you know who he's coming after? Only those that are covered by the blood. Can I ask you a question tonight? My head's about not. Nobody's looking around this building right now. I'm going to ask you a question. If you know one person that comes to your mind right now, and they are not covered by the blood. You know one person right now. They're not covered by the blood. That person that just came to your mind needs you to be praying that somehow, some way, God can speak to them heart and save that soul and they get covered by the blood before it's too late. Because you listen to me. If Jesus comes, they're not going. If that that angel comes, it's too late. It's too late then. So right in that moment, there was somebody that came to your mind. You know they're not covered by the blood. What we need to do is gather around this altar and pray that somehow, some way, God will save that soul. That, 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 that soul will be covered by the blood. They're still coming. You need to come. I'm going to pray because I know tonight, amen, death will come. doesn't matter what street you live on. It doesn't matter how, what kind of house you live in. It doesn't matter, amen, who you are without that blood. Only the blood makes the difference in our church. Only the blood. And that's why we need to plead this blood tonight. The blood of Calvary, the blood of Jesus. Oh, God, don't let them die on it.
Thank you. 